One of the biggest things that makes having your own personal home theater special is having the big immersive screen. Watching movies or shows where the screen takes up the majority of your field of view really just makes you feel like you are there and part of the action. Now you may be wondering though, how much of a job is it to build and install something like this myself? In this video, I'll be walking you through the process I went through while installing this 120 inch projector screen. And you will see some of the challenges I faced along the way with tips to make the process a lot smoother. Now, of course, the first thing you're going to need to know before you can get into installing the screen is what screen should you get? Part of picking the right size is you have to make sure that you get the right size that will match your projector and your room. But you also have to get the right screen material depending on the ambient light in the room, the projector you're using, and other goals. When it comes to making these decisions, I definitely recommend Crutchfield, which is our sponsor for this project. First off, Crutchfield has a really good tech article that you can read to get a better understanding of the different screen options. But better yet, they have a full team of home theater expert advisors that you can talk to and explain your application and they will help you get matched up with the perfect screen for your situation. I originally thought that I was going to have to go with a much smaller screen, but I'm really happy that I talked to a Crutchfield advisor because he was able to explain to me why I'm actually able to go with a much larger screen that I'm far more happy with. You can find the link for that tech article and learn more and take advantage of a special offer at the link down in the video description. After talking with a Crutchfield advisor, this is what we ended up coming up with for my project. This is a Screen Innovations Zero Edge screen. This screen has an ultra thin frame and that was personal preference because once the screen is up on the wall, I want it to have that really thin border so that it almost looks like a really big normal TV. Also because all these lights are on dimmers and I have the ability to really control all the light down here. I'm gonna get some blackout curtains for these windows here. I went with a white background. The pure white color option will really help the colors to pop off the screen and make it look super, super good. So I'm gonna kick this off here. Let's get this all unboxed. So here's everything all open. It looks like I have these four different pieces here. These are going to make up the main screen itself, these aluminum extrusions. And then these are the outer border of the frame. And then that is the screen. I'm gonna keep the screen in the tube as long as possible because we definitely wanna make sure that we don't get any dust or get anything dirty marking up that screen. Also a box of hardware here, the instruction manual. And you guys will notice that I put down a moving blanket. If you were doing this on a carpeted surface, you wouldn't have to be as concerned, but these aluminum extrusions, the ends here are very sharp and pointy. These could easily damage our hard floors. So just a word of advice, if you're doing something like this, it might be worth having a moving blanket ready to go. First things first, it looks like I need to get the main frame assembly of the screen oriented into its rectangular shape. Now we can take these brackets. There's a thin one and a thick one. The thicker one goes up here and the thin one goes here. I just need to slide these into these channels in order to hold these temporarily in place. With these brackets in each of the corners, I lightly tighten the set screws. That way we can do some slight adjustment if need be in order to square up the frame. A lot of projector screens go together this way and we always wanna make sure things are square and we can do that by using a measuring tape and measuring from corner to corner. We wanna make sure that each of those measurements each diagonal is within one eighth of an inch. Now, before we get the screen out of the box and mounted onto the frame here, I do wanna determine where I'm going to mount these mounting brackets on the wall. Mounting these brackets on the wall is bound to create some dust and I don't want that dust coming over here and landing on the screen, so I'd rather do this part first. The advantage of having the frame already built though is I can take some measurements in order to determine my offsets. In other words, this bracket goes into this channel right here and I can now take a measurement from the top of this bracket to where the top of the screen frame is going to be. That way knowing that distance I can account for that when I lay it out on my wall. So the next challenge becomes where should we actually locate this screen on the wall? Left to right is very easy. Obviously you want the screen centered within your room or centered based on where the center of your seating area is going to be. In my case this light right here 
here defines the center of my seating area, so I'll just be lining up with that. Now for the height of our screen, in a typical eight foot room, you want at least one foot, in other words, 12 inches of clearance from the ceiling. In my case, this room already has a drop ceiling, which brings that eight foot level down a little bit, so I'm gonna be a little bit closer than that. And this is going to be dependent on your screen size, but you also want to account for having anything below the screen. In my case, I wanna leave two feet below the screen here. That way I could have a small little table with a center channel speaker on it. I just wanna have that extra bit of room. I spent the time modeling up my room and laying out the screen size just so I knew I'd be happy with the location. But another cool trick you can do is you could measure the size of your screen and you could put little tape marks on the wall at each corner. That way you know you are happy with the general location of the screen. I find that using painter's tape is always really helpful for projects like this. In this case, I was able to mark out the center of the screen location and the left and right side. That way I know approximately where I need to find a stud in order to mount these brackets. I'm using a stud sensor to find those studs and I'm putting a tape mark there as well. If you don't have a stud sensor, a really strong magnet is also a good way to find them because when they lay the drywall, they're going to anchor it into those studs. So we can find the drywall screws by using a magnet just like that. In fact, I like to do this because I find usually those screws are more well centered than what my stud finder will tell me. So in that case, I know I can move this tape slightly over. So I did a little bit of remeasuring and I decided that I actually want the top of the screen in my case to be six inches from the ceiling. So I'm gonna go down six inches and then I have to account for that offset distance from where the bracket is on the screen to the top there, which is another three and a half inches. So I need to go nine and three quarter inches and I'm going to make a mark. To transfer my mark from this side over to this side for the other bracket, I wanna make sure that I use a level and not count on the distance of the ceiling just in case the ceiling is a little out of square. So I'll be transferring one mark over and then moving along and transferring the mark above where the bracket needs to be. All right, so now I can take my bracket and I can line it up with those marks and make sure that I'm centered on my stud here. And I'm gonna mark the location of where I want the tip of each of these screws. And a little tip here to be more accurate on drywall, just use your hand with the screw to poke a little hole first off. That way you're not trying to wrestle with the drill bit and the drill itself, trying to keep everything all attached. And now we can zip these in. And then we make sure our bracket stays good and level while we do our second screw. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm curious what it looks like. So now that I have each of these mounted up, I'm going to do a test fit. At this point, I realized how big the screen is really going to be, so it's pretty exciting. And let's get the screen material mounted onto the frame. When we're applying the screen to the frame, this may be obvious, but you wanna be super careful that you do not crease this material. If you were to accidentally fold it and then apply pressure, that can leave a mark. So we wanna be really, really careful as I transfer the frame back over on top of this so we can start stretching each of these snaps around the back and attaching them. First, I'm gonna go along and I'm going to align each of these snaps with one of the metal pieces. Now this is very important in order to get the proper stretch on the screen. We wanna start at the middle of each side and work our way outwards. So we're gonna do this left side first, middle out, then the right side, middle out, then the top, middle out, and bottom, middle out. This part is definitely the most challenging part of the whole procedure, making sure that you don't have any wrinkles on the screen. But watch this great example here as I walk this wrinkle from the middle of the screen out to the outside, working it out as I snap each snap. At this point, we definitely wanna make sure that our screen is good and tight. Those last few snaps were definitely a challenge to do, and I will say everything is nice and tight on this. If you did still have any wrinkles at this phase, you definitely wanna to try to work them out before we move on to the next part of putting on the trim. Putting on the trim is simple enough. You can see the side profile here. This is just going to snap onto the outside of the frame and then we're going to screw it in with these couple of mounting hole locations. And the reason for this is just to give the outside a nice border, a nice finished look. So now I have the border completely mounted around the screen. So now I just need to get a helper to help me lift this up and put it on the wall. 
So here it is, we've got the screen installed and my friends, I have to say the payoff here is huge. Such a big immersive screen that I know is going to really play a vital role in the overall experience of this home theater system. Now overall, I found with just some basic tools and experience that doing this project wasn't hard at all. I'm pretty confident that just about anyone can do this. Definitely a good idea to have that extra set of hands when you do go to physically hang the screen onto the wall, but otherwise everything was a breeze. Watching 4K content on this screen is incredible and I cannot wait to show you guys the rest of this project. We need to cover running all the wiring for this project, installing the speakers, and building the rack. So if you want to catch those videos, definitely subscribe here on the channel. Really the most challenging part of installing the screen was figuring out which screen to get. So don't forget that you can get help from the advisors over at Crutchfield. You can learn more about them and take advantage of a special offer by checking out the link down below. A big thank you to Crutchfield for being a sponsor of this project and thank you guys for tuning in and watching.